Hello, dear listeners. Welcome to another episode of Follow Your Path. My name is Abdul Abed, and I'm a Surgical Pathology Fellow at University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. And today we will be talking to Dr. Andrew Belize. He is a Clinical Professor of Pathology and Director of GI Pathology at the University of Iowa. I'm also joined today by a future pathologist, Virginia Fernandez. Welcome to the show, Dr. Belize. It's, uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be here. Nice just to chat with you guys. So starting off, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, where you went to medical school, residency, and how did you end up doing GI pathology? Sure. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, it, I'm, I'm, I'm practiced. I was interviewing for uh, our residency program this morning, so I, I, I gave the spiel a couple times already today. Um, I'm from central Connecticut. I was born in Hartford, Connecticut uh, at Hartford Hospital, and and I grew up in Newington, Connecticut, which, which is just the next town over. Uh, I um, was uh, born Catholic, baptized and such, and I went to Notre Dame for, for undergrad. And I'm a, big, I'm a big Notre Dame fan, and I root, for the, I root for the Irish football team and basketball team, and I'm, I'm often found sporting this uh, chapeau. Um, at Notre Dame, I, uh, I met a girl in the church choir freshman year and we got married shortly after, shortly after graduation and she was from Chicago. Uh, and that, that drew me to Chicago for medical school. I went to Northwestern. I didn't come from a medical background. There were a few doctors in the family, but, but, uh, not anybody that I was especially uh, close with. So I was finding my own path to path. When I started medical school, I thought I was going to be family medicine. I was attracted to uh, having a really uh, broad working knowledge. Um, and I was also attracted to being, you know, being really effective. And, and I had this dream of being able to take care of an entire community. Um, summer between First and second year of medical school, I spent the summer working with the family medicine doctor, and I found it, unfortunately, I found it incredibly disappointing. Um, I, I think that my life could have been very different if I had interacted with a different mentor. Uh, I saw him uh, very frustrated in his work. Uh, he was relatively uh, Ill, Ill paid for the, for the amount of hours that he was putting in. Uh, the diseases that we saw in the clinic were diseases of Western civilization, things like, you know, di diabetes and, and complications of smoking. And, and the advice that he offered his patients generally wasn't heated. And it seemed like uh, set up for a long, frustrating career. When I was an undergrad, you know, I didn't have this medical background, but I, I had a bunch of friends who had uh, moms and dads that were physicians and they were mostly internists because most docs are internists and they 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 were they were mostly frustrated I, I I didn't bump into any you know potential role models in undergrad who were really self-satisfied physicians when I was when I was a first year medical student I was incredibly gifted at histology I took to it right away and I loved it, and I thought it was fa fascinating. And I, I often say I'm a structure function guy. That was actually the name of our integrated first year uh, biomedical course at Northwestern, where I went to med school, structure function. And so the idea that I could look through the microscope and see the cell and 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 how that correlated to you know what the cell was was evolved to do was i'm i continue to be blown away uh to the to this day by by the you know the the majesty of the of the human of the human body at the microscopic level so so after that time between first and second year, I was forlorn, a little, a little lost. But everybody told me I was going to be fine because 
even when I was a first year, all my friends who saw me enjoying histology so much said, oh, you're going to be a pathologist. But I, I had never even heard of a patho pathologist. I, I, I guess I had, right? I, I was familiar with Quincy. Uh, and then more contemporary CSI was very popular uh, when, I was in when I was in medical school. And I didn't want to be a forensic patho pathologist. And I didn't really, I didn't have any understanding of what, what diagnostic surgical pathology was. But I went back to second year and and the the lectures that I was that I was hearing in our integrated curriculum, they were mainly pathology lectures in the summer. You know, they the pathologists really had the lion's share of the hours of instruction in the first few months of the second year curriculum. And this guy, Jan Reddy, Janardin Reddy, he was the chair of pathology at Northwestern. He was, uh, he was an incredibly charismatic speaker. Uh, and he, you know, he, he hooked me. And then the, the other event that was like a religious event for me uh, was getting Robbins. And I, you know, I can, I can see it on my, my bookshelf there, my Ro Robbins. And I, you know, I, I remember sitting at the kitchen table and opening it up for the first time and reading the foreword and being take, taken in and then starting to read the first chapter and I and I couldn't put it away. Um, and the, you know, the combination of, of those lectures, especially Dr. Reddy and, and that book uh, drew me in and, and I immediately sook, sought out uh, additional exposure to pathology started emailing pathologists uh, i had uh, pathology based small groups so i had some contacts that i that i leveraged and started going to conferences uh, there was i recall an autopsy gross conference that i would attend every every week all through all through second year um, and then i was so interested in pathology that in my third year when uh, medical students would normally only have the opportunity to rotate in pathology as an elective as a fourth year, I, I reorganized my, sorry about that, I reorganized my schedule uh, so that in the second rotation of my third year, um, in lieu of family medicine, you know, a, a specialty that I had eliminated in that summer, I spent a month in pathology. And so I did my first pathology elective in, in August of my third year of medical school. And after, after that month, I knew that I wanted to be, I wanted to be a pathologist. Um, I had a, I had a great mentor named John Warren, who was a medical microbiologist and he took a lot of interest in in me and i as a fourth year i actually did a elective rotation in medical microbiology with with him and so when i was going into residency i definitely wanted to do anatomic and clinical pathology and i was definitely interested in surgical pathology but i was broadly interested in all of pathology and i thought it was possible that i would end up as a medical microbiologist and then and then i got to residency um and and i i ended up doing apcp at the university of virginia uh i i thought i was going to do residency at northwestern that's where i fell in love with with pathology and uh i think i you know i definitely could have and i would have had a i would have had a great time but i was i was taken by charlottesville and at the time, my 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 wife, now my ex-wife, and I were 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 really itching to start a family, and we had lived in Chicago during medical school, and it was difficult because it was so expensive, and and we were just scraping by, and so when the opportunity to train in a place where we could each have our own car and buy our own place uh we couldn't we couldn't pass that up and it seemed like an ideal place to to start our family 
So I ended up at the University of Virginia, but there were a ton of places that I loved. Actually, my second choice, second choice residency was the University of Iowa, uh, which, you know, I'll let you guys ask another question. I'm not going to talk for the whole 50 minutes. Um, so I ended up in Charlottesville and then Abdul asked how, you know, how did I come to, to GI? And I, I came to GI a lot of different ways, but one of the, one of the things, uh, I, I told you that I was initially interested in family medicine because I wanted, I wanted to command a really vast body of knowledge and apply it in a really meaningful way. And, and when I started doing pathology and I, I, I related that I had interest in anatomic and clinical pathology, I gravitated towards surgical pathology because I'm a, I'm a real, I'm a doer, I'm an active agent. Um, I, I would rather do it than over, than oversee it. And of course, you know, we, we have, we have both of those sides in, in each of us. And I, I do a lot of oversight, right? I'm in, I'm in, I'm in the chemistry lab dir director. I, I don't, I don't actually load the auto stainer my, myself. So I gravitated towards surgical pathology and I found the diagnose, diagnosis at the light microscope to be incredibly compelling and satisfying. I knew I wanted to do academic pathology. You know, I knew I, I wanted to do academic medicine. I think another, you know, super uh, core value is, uh, you know, I, I've always been uh, a teacher, you know, for, from the time I was a, a little boy. Uh, and so I knew going into medicine that I wanted to teach. Uh, and then I say, I went into medicine to teach. I went into pathology to teach. I gravitated towards surgical pathology and and I chose GI pathology because like family medicine, I perceived that among surgical subspecialties that it was the most vast uh, because we've got uh, a rich uh, array of diseases that are both inflammatory and neoplastic. Most of the other subspecialties are are mostly just neoplastic. So we've got inflammations and neoplasias and there's tubal gut and there's liver and pancreas. And, you know, I, I, I didn't want to subspecialize. So if I want, so if I had to subspecialize and I knew that I had to subspecialize, I wanted to choose the, I wanted to choose the biggest subspecialty. And there were lots of other reasons I gravitated toward GI pathology as well. Uh, mentorship, right? So Chris Muscolic, he's the chair of pathology at, UVA right now, but he was, he was a GI pathologist. He was physician scientist. He was the only fellow, fellowship trained GI pathologist in our department at the time. And his pedagogy, you know, the way that he taught, it was, it made so much sense to me. It, it clicked with me. And I think that was important. Uh, Ed Stilo was a junior faculty and he's a, uh, cytologist but he was very very interested in gi and so we did a lot of work, work together in cytology in gi in and cyto cytology so i think those two mentors were core uh i liked the gi i went to the meetings and i liked the gi pathologist the, the most they seemed like the you know it was a big group and it was a fun group and uh, you know, Henry Appleman really stands out as uh, someone that I that I found thought was brilliant and hilarious. And I mean, I'm embarrassed to say it because I'm because I pale in comparison. But I I've modeled my career to some extent after him, uh, in the sense that uh, I admire that he. Uh, He's genuinely Henry, 24 7, 365, that there's no artifice there, that he present what he presents, like he he doesn't he doesn't leave the microscope and be a different become a different person. And so Andrew is always Andrew's Andrew at the microscope in the hallway, in the cafeteria, and at home. And and I also admired his unique point of view. Uh, and I admired fact that he got to know who I was when I was a second year resident 
presenting my first uh, poster, and all those all those things were 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 deeply impactful. And I, you know, I model the way that I interact with folks like you guys uh, after how Henry interacted with me when I was a baby resident. And then the other person that deserves a big shout out in terms of influencing my career was Liz Montgomery uh, reading mm -hmm. her reading her biopsy book when I was a when I was like a second year resident or first or second year resident I read that book and it made sense and I, and I read all those books and that was the one book that made sense and I don't know if it was the way that Liz wrote or the way that folks like Henry and Bob Riddell had figured out how to correlate what they were seeing in these endoscopic mucosal biopsies with the presentation of disease, you know, this systematic approach to, to diagnosis that, you know, that Liz was channeling through her writing. But I, I guess I would say advice to, to anybody is if you have a choice between something, uh, pursuing something that you're, that you're interested in and that you find to be, to come naturally, and be kind of easy versus something that you're not interested in and is incredibly difficult that you know you probably should should apply your efforts toward the former so that's what brought me to gi pathology i applied for fellowship uh and i applied mainly in the midwest uh you know we had done our time on the east coast and wanted to get sarah back toward uh chicago closer to her family and we were expecting uh when when I was graduating from residency, I did my fellowship at Ohio State uh, with Wendy Frankel, who was another great influence, like a mentor and sponsor. You know, she's she's always fiercely advocated for me and sort of plowed plowed the field in front of in front of me uh, and gave given me opportunities to to shine. Uh, I was a junior faculty at Brigham and Women's Hospital. I worked there for a little over two years where I was deeply influenced by Jason Hornick uh, and Chris Fletcher, mainly, mainly, but by lots of other folks as well. And I'm a GI pathologist and Abdul, you know, he asked me to come in here, come on here and talk about GI pathology. but. But I'm also an immunohistochemist, and, and I, I actually I say I'm an immunohistochemist first. I say GI pathology is what I do to pay the bills. Uh, you know, it's what the department hired me to do is sign out a bunch of cases. But immunohistochemistry is my passion, and and I you know I talk too much, so I could, <laughs> I, so I could talk for a half an hour about my path in immuno, you know, toward and in immunohistochemistry. But I but I will say at Brigham, uh, working with Jason, who's another master immunohistochemist, that 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 really further fueled my enthusiasm and abilities uh, in immunohistochemistry. I came to Iowa in 2011, uh, Halloween 2011. So I just had my 11 year anniversary. And I I mostly do what I want to do. The department's general, but uh, I subspecialize GI pathology with one other pathologist in January 2014. Uh, we started a fellowship shortly thereafter. We just recruited our eighth fellow. Uh, I've been the director of the immunohistochemistry lab since July 2013, so I think six months before we had subspecialized GI, and I mainly sign out GI pathology. About 90% of my service weeks are in GI pathology and run the immunohistochemistry lab. And we went from two GI pathologists to one for a brief period when the person that I co-founded the service with uh, took took a job in private to three for, for many years. We were stable at three. Uh, but actually, we when my fellow from this year, Matt, Matt Gossie, uh, uh, joins our faculty in July, will be eight. And so that's the story from birth at Hartford Hospital to uh working with a tremendous group of of talented gi pathologists at the university of iowa hospitals and clinics 
Oh, wow. Well. Can yeah. you uh, share with us a case that you have found the most interesting in your career? Boy, that's that's a really that's a really great question. Um, so there are there are so many there are so many memorable there are so mem many memorable cases. But, you know, one thing I'll say is that when I make a mistake, it really it really sticks with me. Uh, the other thing I'll I'll say is the. The thing that's interesting about GI pathology is there are there are so many memorable cases. Ninety nine percent of the cases are routine, or maybe even ninety nine point five percent of the cases are routine. But but GI pathology is so vast that every couple days and at least once a week. I bump into a case where I say, oh, it's one of these, you know, I see this every year, or, oh, it's one of these, I see this every two or three years, or, oh, it's one of these, I've seen this two or three times in my career. So I still get excited. I think the things that get me the most excited because they're, they're instant pattern recognitions, you don't have to work through them are GI infectious diseases. So I still get excited when I diagnose Giardia, for example, for example or intestinal spirochetosis, or MAI, or adenovi adenovirus, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then I, I really enjoy oncopathology and I, I enjoy, and that's where, that's where I really use my immunohistochemistry chops. Uh, I like, I like working through what I've, you know, I've developed algorithmic approaches to tumor diagnosis using immunohistochemistry. And I like the challenge of working through the cases in a, in a stepwise manner. I, I call it, you know, playing chess. With the case. And my goal is to always solve the case, you know, with the most specific diagnosis as possible in as few moves possible so i love solving a hard case you know where you know maybe i can do five or seven or ten ihc when somebody else might do 30 or 40 and not and not be able to to figure out figure it out so you know just every case <laughs> so what is now that That's you're fair. yeah now that you've talked about uh, your algorithm and i've read the paper that you wrote uh among other among other ihc papers but one of the papers has to like unknown uh uh primary of unknown origin paper, how to solve that. Uh, so what is your favorite IHC stain? Huh? What is your favorite IHC stain? That's a great, that's a good one. Uh, I'm the, I'm the chair that, and actually we're, we're headed to, we're headed to Tucson and it's my last meeting. Um, the chair of the College of American Pathologists Immunohistochemistry Committee and uh, the chairs do four years. So six, I was on for six years and have been chair for four years. And when I chaired my first meeting four, year, four years ago, uh, I wanted an icebreaker question. And I, I worked, we were meeting in, in collaboration with the Surgical Pathology Committee. And Aaron Arbach is the chair of the Surge Path Committee, and we sort of workshopped this the night the night before, and and we wanted an icebreaker question. And the the icebreaker question that I came up with for the group is, what's your favorite what's your favorite stain? Uh, and actually, I have a I have a list of everybody's responses, and and I I I host a lot of talks. Um, and a lot of the folks that I were, was in the room with that day, uh, meeting with with IHC and search path committees, are folks that I've you know that I've had give talks on on my behalf, like at the university or in the something called ISOM, International Society for Immunohistochemistry and Molecular Morphology webinar series, or when I go off and give a give a talk, and somebody who's invited me was somebody that was in the room uh, this uh, that day. So for David Rim uh, is like a world expert in bio, in biomarkers and sort of 
the biochemistry of the immunohistochemistry and how that impacts biomarker, uh, you know, readout interpretation. Uh, I had David give uh, the ISOM webinar lecture uh, a, a couple months ago, and I had recalled that David's favorite immunohistochemical stain was, he said, uh, anything that's uh, fluorescent and uh, multiplexed, which reflects his, you know, his background and his interests. And I'm a silly, silly guy. And, you know, let me know if you guys, if you guys can figure, figure this out, I'll, I'll give you a second. But uh, this is a, a stain that I had done research on several years before. It's a urea cycle enzyme. I was looking to develop novel hepatocellular differentiation markers and had the observation that that two of the most famous uh, hepatocellular differentiation markers are HEPPAR1 and uh, arginase1. And HEPPAR1 actually stands for hepatocyte paraffin1. And the actual uh, protein that it recognizes is carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 1. And so this CPS1 and arginase 1 are urea cycle enzymes. And I said, well, what about all the other urea cycle enzymes? And so I made tests for all the other urea cycle enzymes. And one of the urea cycle enzymes is arginino-succinate synthetase 1. And so what, what's, what's the abbreviation for <laughs> if carbamoyl phosphate synthetase one is CPS one, it's ASS one, it's ASS one. So, so at that meeting, at least four years ago, I said, my favorite stain was arginino succinate synthetase one. And I, I, I have to tell you that all summer when we were optimizing this and running all these research slides. The lab techs, uh, my lead tech, Ellen, she couldn't stop giggling. <laughs> and actually, arginino succinate synthetase one ha has utility. Like it's emerged as a useful diagnostic marker right. in the hepatic adenoma space. So ASS one <laughs> has traction. And I I went to the USCAP meeting to present to present this uh, this poster about all these different urea cycle enzymes. And I never got so many questions from other liver pathologists than my experience. Like they, it was their favorite stain as well. I think it was my favorite stain and their favorite stain for very different reasons. <laughs> so, so moving on, what, what do you find is the most gratifying aspect of your job as a GI pathologist and as an IC director? that's a really hard there's that's a really hard question I, you know i i think i'm really fortunate to to have a have chosen a career uh in which i'm able to honor my honor my values and the most gratifying part of my job i don't know you know it's you know i'm full i say i'm fully engaged in the tripartite mission and i and i uh i i I get juice from all the different parts of my job. So what, like, I get excited when I make an awesome diagnosis. Uh, I get really excited when I make an awesome diagnosis and I order, you know, I order a stain and then a few hours later, like that, that night or the next morning when I get the result that it, al it aligns with, uh, with what I, what I, what I saw in the H and E. So like when, when the tumor that's that's an undifferentiated carcinoma with rhabdoid cytomorphology comes back and is in fact uh, SMARC A4 BRG1 deficient, like that's super gratifying. Uh, when I finally finish a paper that I've been working on for months and months and months, that's super gratifying. When it gets tons of traction on social media that's super, that's super gratifying. When hundreds of people show up to hear me talk or to hear me host a, a monthly webinar for this ISOM that I, that I mentioned, that's super gratifying. And then hands down, the most important work that I do every day is in resident fellow educate, 
education. And so, so when my ex extern Matt decides that he wants to do pathology and he wants to do pathology residency at the University of Iowa, and then decides that he wants to be a GI pathologist and then decides that he wants to be a GI pathologist that works on my team, it doesn't get any more gratifying than that. Oh, wow. What is the training like for uh, this subspecialty? What's GI fellowship like? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really good, I think that's a really good question. And I think that there's not one, I think there's not one answer. And I've, you know, I, I, I trained at UVA, there was no, there was no sub, it's general sign out still, there was no subspecialty fellowship. Uh, I went to Ohio State and, and so I, I can sort of comment on what that fellowship experience was like. And then I, you know, I'm a fellowship director. So one of the identities I have is GI fellowship director here. And, and I can tell you about how our fellowship is. I can also give you some feedback from, you know, folks that I, folks that I interview for, for fellowship. And, and so my fellowship with Wendy was pretty loose. Um, it, I was, it was a new fellowship. I was the third fellow. And I think Wendy was really excited because I was super academic and super energetic and ambitious. And she really let me do whatever I wanted, Frank, frankly. Uh, so I could sign out or not. I could interact with the residents more or, or less. I, it was fun to, you know, to like mentor junior residents. I would double scope cases with them or look at consults. Like they would consult me instead of another pathologist. And, but I did a ton of scholarship. I spent hours in the library every day. It's where I laid down my my really dense uh, knowledge in GI pathology. I was also going to Brigham, and I was so scared that I would fail that I studied harder than I had ever studied in my life. And then I showed up, and I knew so much GI pathology that I might have known as much or more GI pathology than some other GI pathologist. I have a famously good memory. Uh, but I did a GI fellowship and, and then I went to work at Brigham and I did half GI and half general surge path. And so I reflect, like I reflected when I became a fellowship director, you know, what in my GI fellowship prepared me for my future doing not just GI pathology. And I loved surgical pathology and so even though I was doing a straight GI pathology fellowship, I took an active role in our frozen section service. They had this, they call it academic frozen section service. They have like a select group of folks that read all the frozens during the day at Ohio State. And it was these two older, older guys, Gary and Larry, and we hit it off personally too. And they could tell I was smart and could bail them out in a pinch. And so all year I looked at frozens and that prepared me to do general surgical pathology. I also helped out in like a breast QA uh, pro project. So I was fine, but, but I'm reflecting on, well, the, the median fellowship applicant and fellow, fellow in GI pathology, what, what is their job, first job gonna look like? And it's, exceedingly unlikely that it's going to be straight GI pathology. Even I don't do straight GI pathology and I do more GI pathology than almost anybody that I know. You're either going to go into the community and do general and be the GI go-to, or you're going to work in academics and you're likely going to work at a place that's subspecialized. I think the vast majority of academic departments are subspecialized and you're going to get to do GI but you're almost certainly going to have to do a second, if not a third area of sub of subspecialization. And so when I built the GI pathology fellowship here in collaboration with the leaders of our like, like historically awesome uh, general surgical pathology fellowship, we worked to 
synergize. Um, and so my GI pathology fellowship is not 12 months of GI, it's eight. Uh, eight months of GI, and, which is, in my opinion, more than, more than enough mm. to begin becoming an expert, right? We're all mm. life, lifelong learners. Uh, and four months of general surge path. And, and the general surge path fellowship has four one, one month rotations and they cycle through a few times over the course of the fellowship. So there's a hot seat where every slide except for derm and neuro and renal that comes out of histology goes to the hot seat first for preview by the hot seat fellow. So you get to see the entire breadth of surgical pathology and a huge number of cases and you have to go really fast. Right. Uh, there's a, and then there's frozens where our surge path fellows read the frozens. Um, they have a faculty backup, but it's faculty backup. Call if you need me. Otherwise, I'll be by every couple hours to sign off. So that Gret, like a, fr a frozen rotation with a lot of autonomy, but also like an umbilical cord that right. can be used as much as needed. Mm -hmm. And then there's uh, consults, uh, and we have two different types of consults, just like everybody else. We have uh, we call them outside slides cases, patients who've been referred to the cancer center, and we're just re-reviewing prior pathology. And then we get lots of directed uh, consults, either to like dear GI pathology or dear Dr. Belizzi. Uh, so there's that rotation. And then there's a general fellow sign out uh, rotation. So my GI pathology fellow does eight months of GI, but they do each, they do eat one month each of each of those four general rotations. And then the general fellows, each of the four general fellows get to come to GI. I call it finishing school. They come in the spring. They come in uh, February, March, April, and May, and May. And a lot of them after doing general surge are going to work in the community. So we polish them up to work, uh, to work in the, in the community. The, mm -hmm. the other thing that's really, Im I think is really important is fellow sign out. And so my goal with my GI fellow is to get them ready for fellow sign out, uh, as soon as, as soon as they're comfortable. And as soon as my faculty is comfortable, um, and then, you know, the one thing that I took from Wendy, was she gave me a lot of latitude in my fellowship because she saw that I had some unique characteristics and wanted us together to take advantage of those. And so one thing that's really important to me in general, working with trainees, uh, but I have the best opportunity to tailor it with my GI fellow is to have a dialogue about what their goals are, what they want to get out of the fellowship, even what they want to get out of the week or the or the month. And that for my GI fellowship, it's not it's not one size fits all. Each fellow's experience is, is tailored to the wants and needs of the fellow. Mm -hmm. So last year's fellow Abraham uh, was incredible, incredibly like intellectually curious and research oriented and scholarly. And so we made time for him to do scholarship. We even, we gave him an academic half day uh, every, every week. Whereas other fellows are much more clinically oriented and they, you know, they wanted to do as much fellow sign out as they wanted or as they could. Matt is the current fellow and his career aspirations are uh, you know, I told you he's going to stay on here, but he's very interested in education at all levels, medical student and re and resident. And so we're working with him to try to figure out how that's going to become uh, an important part of my uh, important part of his career. Mm. I guess, you know, I, I say for every fellow that my responsibility is to get you a running start 